What's up? This is Damon from StockBarometer.com, also from DamonVario.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the best five technical indicators for stocks in 2015. It is already 2015. It has been for at least a couple months, or one month, I guess. And what people are doing today doesn't really differ from what they have been doing in the past, which is sad. When people are looking at stocks, and hoping to use technical indicators for stocks, they've already made a good decision. They're not relying on their local fortune teller. They're not relying on gossip. They're relying on something that is a true form of analysis backed by facts, which is technical analysis. Now the problem is, it's already 2015. We have a wide variety of information sources in front of us. You don't have to go to the library to research technical analysis anymore. You can simply turn on your computer, connect to the internet, and find some you know, well-documented sources that statistically show which technical indicators are actually useful and which are bunk. For example, head and shoulder charts have already been shown for quite a while to be not effective at all. They are pretty much as effective as flipping a coin to determine the direction of a stock. Yet people still rely on this. Yet you'll still find articles on Investopedia that show it to be, well, that imply that it is a useful way of technical analysis. However, if you go and look at the studies online, you see that indeed this thing is not a reliable method of predicting stock direction. Why are people still using it? I don't know. People are just people. They stick with their ways. So I'm hoping that some people will learn from this video these five methods that are actually reliable, that you can actually use to predict the direction of a stock. And I'm not even kidding here. This is not something that's random. This is something that has a, has a form of randomness involved, but still backed by statistics to the point where you can use these things to make predictions that actually have a probability attached to them. For example, if you use um, gap analysis plus candlestick analysis, often you can predict the direction of a stock with 90% probability, with 90% accuracy. So what we're going to look at today are five technical indicators that you can actually use in your own stock prediction methodology to have a much better trading method and trading uh, result than you would otherwise. Those five technical uh, indicators are, let me just write a little list right here. Let's grab a little list. I can write them down and go point by point. We got candlesticks, we got gaps, we got stochastics, we got uh, drift, and finally we got support and resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about well, I'm going to move, let's see, let's go in, let's start with support and resistance. Let's go in the easiest order, okay? So support and resistance, you probably have an idea what they are. When you want to analyze a stock and check out its support and resistance, I recommend you go to stockta.com. This is a very easy way to check the support and resistance. Let's say you type in a stock, your favorite stock is maybe EMC. So you check out EMC. Now, what you're gonna see when you first get in here are red lines and green lines. Some lines are dotted, some lines are solid, and you'll see an even thicker solid line. So let's check out another stock. Why not just check out Yahoo? Should find a thick line in there somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So you see a thick red line. The green lines are support lines. The red lines are resistance lines. How do you read these? Well, it's hard to actually look at the lines in this chart right here, so what you should do is go to the left where it says support and resistance. It will tell you the value of the stock at which the resistance lies. This implies, by the way, the confidence here implies the strength of the resistance. What the numbers here imply are the difficulties of passing the red lines upward and passing the green lines downward. So if you see a strong level of resist above the current stock price, of course resist has have to be above the stock price, but if you see it's close to the current stock price, generally, and we're talking about strong resist here, 
if you see a strong resist above the current stock price, you generally don't want to buy that stock. You generally will predict that the stock is more likely to go down than to go up. Here we see that Yahoo is currently trading at 40, 48 bucks, and we see a resist at 48.59. You would probably not be a smart person to invest in Yahoo right now because Yahoo is going to have a hard time breaking through that resistance level. On the other hand, if you look at all of these resistance or supports, you find that their confidences are quite low. In other words, it's easy for the stock to drop down through these levels of support. Now, how do you use these to make uh, predictions? Well, what you generally want to do is you want to look at the confidence of the closest resist and the closest support. If you see a strong confidence in the resist, don't buy the stock. Instead, possibly short the stock. If you see a strong support level, you'll want to buy the stock, don't short the stock. And if in some situations you see a strong level of resist above the stock price and a strong level of support below the stock price, you can be pretty confident that the stock is going to trail sideways. It's not going to be a stock that breaks out of that resist and support area very easily. It's probably going to bounce back and forth between those two values. And if it's a close area, such as 46 to 48, it's going to trail between those that only $2. So that's not something you want to bet on with stocks. Of course, if you're using option strategies, you can actually profit on stock that trails sideways. But we're talking about stock here, so you generally just want to find something that's either going to go down with a strong resist or go up because it has a strong level of support. This is probably the first thing you want to look at and this is good for both long-term and short-term trading. That is support and resist. We're going to move on to the second technical indicator. I'm going to go to stochastics because it's convenient. You can also look at stochastics on this website. You go down below the level of support and resist to another area that lists a bunch of chart indicators. Not all of these are very useful. Sometimes I use Fibonacci. I'll, I'll talk about that in another, uh, in another video, but that's not really the most useful. I picked out the five best ones, the five most reliable ones, because you, know, you don't have time to analyze all of these indicators. And often I don't analyze all of these indicators before making a bet. I usually, I usually will look at, I can't go all the way back. I'll usually look at support candlesticks and gaps unless uh, unless some of those indicators don't tell me anything for example if I see that the resist and support are both low it doesn't really tell me anything then I might add in another indicator so I can have three indicators before I make a bet but the, all five of these are great indicators to use so let's get back to here what you do in this chart indicator table is you go down to stochastics it's abbreviated you click on that it'll bring you to a new window now, actually, you don't even need to go in there, but it's, it's good to take a look. It's good to understand the indicators instead of just basing your trades on them blindly. Here it says that the stochastics imply Yahoo is bearish. Now, let's see what that really means. The stochastics analysis actually is in this chart already, but you can go here to look at it more clearly. And what I'm saying is it's down here where it says full stochastic. But you go down here into the stochastic analysis, it cuts everything else off and it just tells you well is it going to be bearish or bullish if it's red it's bearish if it's green it's bullish here what we see is the stochastic chart gives us two lines a fast line and a slow line we generally only care about the fast line the slow line is called the slow line because it trails behind the fast line whatever the fast line does the slow line will often do you know briefly afterwards so you're going to look at this blue line and what you want to look for is if the blue line is close to or passing 80, then the stock is usually overbought. If the blue line is close to or passing 20, then the stock is usually oversold. Now, if it's above or close to 80, it means it's overbought, which implies that the stock is going to drop. And what we're seeing here is we, we see a price increase in Yahoo, and then the last candlestick might imply that it's going to drop soon. And we actually see that with the stochastics as well. So our bet would be bearish as well. So analyzing Yahoo just on this level of resistance and supports plus the stochastics 
we can see that there's a resistance above it, above the current stock price. So it's probably not a good bet. In addition, the stochastics say that Yahoo is overbought, so it's probably going to be sold off. Yeah, that's stochastics. Higher than 80, sell, or short. Lower than 20, buy. Let's look at, let's just, for the sake of checking out the other one, what was it, EMC. Let's look at the stochastics here. We see the blue line is between 20 and 50, so it's looking a little bullish because it's below 50, but it's really not close enough to 20 for me to have a uh, prediction based on stochastics. In here it says bullish, but I would say it's not really bullish. I'd say it's probably a little neutral here. By the way, the good thing about this website is that they have levels of bullish. They don't just say bullish. They say bullish or very bullish. Generally, I would trust very bullish and not really trust bullish because I think what this is doing is it's saying that if it's below like 40, then it's bullish. I don't think so. 40 is close to 50. It's more or less random at that point. If it gets down to maybe below 30, I would say, okay, that's that's trustworthy. So that's stochastics. Stochastics basically tell you whether a stock is oversold or overbought. We always want to look at the fast line, the blue line at this website. So here we'd say, okay, this indicator is inconclusive because it's not close enough to 20. And we'd also say that neither the resist here or the support here for EMC are strong enough to give us an indication as to whether the stock is going to go up or down. Now, Yahoo, we saw just based on these two indicators, was quite bearish. And from that, from those two indicators, you might as well just, you know, if you don't have much time or much more information, you might as well just say, well, I got two indicators that say it's bearish. I'm going to go with that. You may as well, right? If you're not investing a large amount of money, if you're just playing around, that's fine. I would say you should usually stick with at least three indicators before you make a bet, but two sometimes is also okay. Now, if we were analyzing EMC, there's a problem because neither the support and resistance levels tell us anything, nor does the stochastics. From here, I would move on to another indicator. Now, I'm going to talk about drift. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about drift right now. Drift is an indicator that you want to use for long-term investments, not short-term investments. So let's say Let's go and check out Yahoo Drift, and then we'll check out EMC's Drift. I go to the website MarketWatch to see, to look at Drift, simply because because we're going to be looking at a line chart instead of a candlestick chart, which is what we saw here. The line chart allows us to better see Drift, better use our eyes to predict Drift. But of course, you're always going to use mathematics if you can. Let's go to Yahoo. check out the drift for Yahoo. Now what is drift? Drift is, you got to think of stock as a Brownian motion, which is a statistical idea that says stock is a random process. It's a set of random movements up and down. Um, but it's not entirely random because each Brownian motion has something associated with it. Usually one of the important things when you look at a Brownian motion is the drift of the Brownian motion. This is a mathematical concept that tells you whether the Brownian motion has a tendency to go up or down. To look at a drift of a stock with a with a statistical backing, in other words, a an appropriate way to look at the drift of a stock is to calculate where the stock is in its 52 week low to high range. Now we can see here it's actually quite high but we want to be statistically confident that it really is high. We're just not looking at it and making that prediction from our eyeballs. Now, the line chart tells us, gives us a pretty good idea. And I would say you don't need to do the calculation here because it's pretty clear. Here is the 52-week low. This line is the 52-week high. And we see that it's actually quite high. And you know I would say this is above 80%. But it's always nice to pull out a calculator do that do that calculation here. So the 52 week high is a range between 52.62 and 32.15. Now that range is 20.47. And how much higher are we right now? Well, we are we are, let's see, 
from 1.5 to 2.62, that is 1 point, I should show you the math, shouldn't I? Or you, you probably get it. Okay, so here's what you do. You find the, the, the range, the length of that section, that intersection between the 32-week low and 32-week high. We see that between the 32-week, how oh, am I doing? 52-week low and the 52-week high, we have $20.47 as the range. Now, what we're seeing is the stock price right now is 51.45. How much away from 52.62 is 51.45? Well, we just do subtraction. 52.62 minus 51.45 is going to be, so let's write this down. You could do this in your head, but for the sake of completeness and accuracy, I'm just going to write it down. So this is our range, right? Grab our calculator again. Now we're going to take the high, 52.62, and subtract our current value, 51.45, and that's 1.17. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 1.17. Uh, oh, sorry. We're going to divide 1.17 divided by 20.47, and we're going to see where we are at in that range. 1.17 divided by 20.47. And before I hit equals, I'm going to tell you that the way you look at this is if you want high, a high level of statistical accuracy, what you're going to do is you're going to hope that this number is less than 20%. It's less than 0.2. If it is, then we're going to say yes. This is this stock. What we're looking at, our eyeballs, our eyeballs are not fooling us. We really are at a yearly high right now. Let's see. It is less than 0.2. So our eyeballs could have told us yes. We are actually within truly around six percent of the yearly high. Now, what does this mean? If a stock is near the yearly high, it tends to continue going upward. If a stock is near the yearly low, it tends to continue downward. However, there, a, there is an exception, and we must look at this after we find a significant indicator here. If, remember, we saw that Yahoo is probably bull, uh, bearish, but again, this is drift, and drift is talking about a long-term investment. So this is a good indicator if you're going to be a buy and hold seller, a buy and hold investor. The caveat here is that we also have to check the three-year high. If the three-year high mismatches, oh, I'll tell you the three-year high, okay? So after you check the first year high, you can't be conclusive. You can't say, well, it's within 20%, therefore the stock is probably going to continue going upward because statistics have shown that this is true for one year, but it's also the opposite situation for three years. So we're going to check the three-year high and low. And we see again, I'm not going to do the calculation here, but we see again that we are at a three-year high, and the tendency for stock at a three-year high is to reverse. Likewise, the tendency for stock at a three-year low is to reverse. So always check. If we have a one-year high, and we don't see anything significant in the three years, or we see we're at a three-year low, in that case, the stock is going to be bullish. However, if we see a one-year high, and a three-year high, statistics say that the stock is going to reverse direction and begin to fall. So again, on Yahoo, we are actually bearish here. Now, the reverse situation is true. If we saw that it was a one-year low and a three-year low, we would be bullish on the stock. Likewise, if there was a one-year low, but we saw nothing for three years, for example, it was in the middle, then we would also be bullish on the stock. Okay, That is drift. Um, useful for long-term investing. I don't really use it much because I do more swing trading than anything. So that is a good indicator if you are a buy and hold investor. Now we're going to get to the more complicated of the uh, technical indicators. We're going to go on, we're going to do, let's do candlesticks first because I think people are more familiar with that stuff. Candlesticks, I don't use, though you can use this chart, I don't use this for candlesticks so much, but what you're going to do for candlesticks is there are two websites I like to use. One is candlestickchart.com.
candlestickchart.com. Candlestickchart.com gives you, I think, about a month of candlesticks. Yeah, about a month. So these are the candlesticks for RTN. You're going to need a chart that can display the candlesticks bigger than this because this is, when it charts it for half a year, you can't really look at the candlesticks up close. Here, you can look at it up close. Even better is the Yahoo Interactive stock chart because you can, and here's how you get the candlesticks here. I didn't actually know about this because I didn't play around with it when I first started out, but after I played around with it, I figured out how to get the candlesticks. You want to switch to one month or three months. It depends on your time frame. I usually use one month, but you can also. This is also one month. So if I'm going to Yahoo, it's usually because I couldn't find what I was looking for here. So I'm going to go three months. And over here, there's a little line, uh, little image right here. You can switch it to candles. After you switch it to candles, you get all the candlesticks. Beautiful, right? And actually, Yahoo's does look quite a bit better than than candlestickchart.com. But you know, you gotta mess around with this. I haven't found a way to save save uh, the settings so that it automatically gives me the candlesticks when I log into Yahoo. Now, what are we looking for here? Here's the problem. Candlesticks is a really useful and statistically significant indicator. However, it's quite complicated because there are so many candlestick patterns, it's hard to remember them all. So I recommend you look them up in a website called thepatternsite.com. And you can choose the visual candlestick index. It gives you indications of where all the uh, candlesticks are headed toward. The problem is not all of these candlesticks are statistically significant. So although this does give you a nice directory of all the possible candlestick patterns and which way they, in theory, indicate the stock to go, not all of them are useful. In fact, I would say most of them are more or less random. For example, the rickshaw man doesn't really give you much direction. Piercing pattern I don't think is very useful either. So the problem is you'd have to actually study this and if you're watching a YouTube video, you're probably a, a good student because other people are watching like you know music videos and garbage TV on on YouTube. But you're actually inve investing in yourself here. However, I imagine you're watching YouTube because you don't want to pick up a book or maybe you're you're eating lunch or something. You don't have m much time to dedicate to memorizing all the candlestick patterns. So I would say just pick out the most useful ones. I in my in my course that I've just completed. Um, where am I going here? In my course called the Gap Game Plan, I actually have a nice layout of candlestick indicators in step three. Um, they're combined with gaps, so you I wouldn't use these alone. But if you, in a minute after I show you gaps, if you get interested in, in using gaps as one of your technical indicators, you might want to purchase this course and then use this because it's super easy and, and just it's a lot easier than having to memorize all the candlesticks. So what happens is, let's say you, you're using gaps and you want to make a gap play on an up gap. What I do is I open these folders, and if you think the up gap is going to widen, in other words, you think that you're not okay. Here's how you do it: you look at the candlesticks and then you try to match them. So here, let's go back to this. So that's RTN. Um, we don't need this. Oh, we do. We don't do this. Okay, here we are. Okay, so here's what you do. You just match the recent candlesticks with anything you see here. When it says widen for up gaps, these are the candlestick patterns that are statistically probable, and I mean like with 70% or above accuracy, that the candlestick or that the uh, the stock price will increase. We don't see any of that here. So then we go to fill, which would be downward. We don't really see any of that here, but we did see, check it out, if we had looked at this yesterday and we saw these two black crows, we would predict that the next day is probably going to be down. The stock price is going to drop, which indeed it did. How convenient, right? These candlesticks are very useful and very predict, uh, statistically backed, especially with gaps. When you mix these with gaps, you can get up to 90% accuracy on the direction of a stock, which is why I pretty much only use them with gaps. But you can also use them without gaps. In fact, when I make a trade, I open it with gaps and candlesticks as my indicators, and then I close it with just candlesticks and support slash resist or the other indicators I looked at if I'm using a certain type of play. So stochastics, so for example. Now, um, so 
what can I teach you about these candlesticks right now? Um, nothing really. I would just say go find the most useful candlestick patterns you can. Um, I'll, I'll teach you a couple useful ones right now. Let's see here. Bullish engulfing, very useful. The bullish engulfing candlestick is when you have a large green candlestick eating a small red candlestick. And I think I just saw a bullish engulfing candlestick for one of the stocks I recommended in my newsletter. I might be mistaken. What was that stock? What was it? I think it's NSC. We're supposed to short that or... Okay, this is a different candlestick. Never mind. Um, but here's another example of a candlestick. If you see a small red one being eaten by a big green one on the left, not on the right like we saw here, you would predict that it's going to go down. This is called a bearish harami. And the different levels of accuracy attached to these candlestick patterns will influence whether you want to use them. In this uh, gap guide I have, I only have the best candlesticks. So bullish engulfing is one of the better ones. I would say the bearish harami is not super accurate, but it's it's pretty accurate. Bullish engulfing is good. The deliberation is good. Deliberation is when you see green, green, and then a smaller green. This is a good one because a lot of investors think that the smaller green means that the stock price has stopped going up. But in fact, the truth is, uh, the stock price tends to continue going up after that. It's just a little bit of hesitation before a continuation of that stock price. That's a very useful one as well. Side-by-side uh, -side white soldiers, side-by-side -side candlesticks that are going up are also pretty good. Let's see for bearish candlesticks, evening star is great. It's when you see a up and then a star and then a down. Um, bearish engulfing is good. It's when you see a red one eating a green one on the left. That's also a downward trend. Two black rows we just looked at. Let's see, these are some more bearish. Um, the inverted hammer is a pretty reliable one. That's when you have a candlestick that looks like an upside down hammer. It can be red or green after a red candlestick. And okay, these are bullish. Useful bullish one. And Ben and Baby is pretty useful. It's pretty much the inverse of what we just saw, the evening star, where you got a red candlestick, a star, and then a green candlestick. This is a reliable upward uh, upward indicator. So those are candlesticks. You gotta spend some time memorizing them or just watch this video a couple times and go th and you know rewind after I just showed you those candlestick charts. And you can, you know, pretty much memorize the most of the most of the useful candlestick patterns and then look at the chart. So here's how I'd use it. I'm going to go ahead and type in something I haven't looked at. Um, let's try Hume. All right, so what would I say based on this chart? I would say the candlestick pattern here is probably inconclusive. I don't see any useful patterns right now. It might be trending sideways in that case. Let's go on to something else. Uh, HKTV. Hong Kong Television. Again, nothing really useful here. I'm hoping to find something useful. Let's try one more, and if we don't see it, I'll just go back into the chart and and find something uh, earlier. Uh, let me think here. What's a good one? What's a good one here? Let's look at Exxon. All right, Exxon. Here we see a bearish harami. We just saw that. That is a green candlestick followed by a red candlestick. Harami, I believe, I'm not exactly fluent in Japanese, but I believe that harami means pregnant. So it's almost like the green candlestick is pregnant with a red candlestick. And this implies, this usually implies a bearish trend. So I would say from today onward, Zom is going to drop a bit. Exxon's probably going to drop. And, you know, with oil these days, it's not surprising. So that's that's one thing, that's one way to look at a stock chart. You look at the candlesticks and make that prediction based on the candlesticks. Of course, you need to, you should probably be using it in conjunction with all the other indicators. Now let's go on to the final indicator, the one that I've researched the most, which is gaps. And now we don't need this anymore. Um, gaps. Gaps are... Let's see if we can find a gap here. I don't see a gap here. Let's see if there is a gap in the previous chart. Yes, okay. Gaps are literally gaps. Gaps are when you have a, a candlestick and the next day's candlestick don't really connect in terms of price. 
you can actually see this if we uh, take out the line chart. So let's go to HKTV and look at the line chart, show you what it really means. Bear with me here. Oh man. Too many clicks in Yahoo, man. They gotta fix that. All right. As you can see, HKTV is not a heavily traded stock. Here is the line chart, and we saw that the gap was well. There, there have been quite a few gaps. There was recently a gap on the twenty something if so four days ago. So let's check out the five day chart. So go to the line chart, and it really doesn't show you in Yahoo. That's too bad. Well, what you actually see is a jump in price, and this is probably that jump. So it was pro not not any. What the hell is going on? All right, whatever. Forget it. The idea is this. When the stock opens, we'll look at this this area here. When the stock opens on the next day, it opens at a price way higher than it closed at the previous day or even opened at the previous day. So it basically jumped. The price jumped overnight. That is a gap. Most gaps fill the same day. Um, so if you watch how the price jumps in a day and then goes back to normal, goes back to the price that was at on the previous day, that's not a real gap. Gaps for the sake of my type of analysis is a gap that happens and stays for at least one day. So here what we'd see is, um, this is not a good stock to look at because it's not heavily traded. We need something with a higher volume. We already saw that ZOM doesn't work. Uh, I think Yahoo had a gap, no? Who knows? Okay, here we have a gap in Yahoo. The gap, see, there's a disconnect between this day and this day. That's a gap. There are multiple types of gaps, but what we really care about is whether the type of gap is a gap that will fill or a gap that will widen. A gap that will fill is a gap that tells us the stock price is going to go in the direction of the gap. This is a gap that will fill. I can just tell from my own experience. This gap will fill. I'll tell you why. First of all, the gap is within trading range. Second of all, the gap has a within trading range volume as well. So just by looking at the gap, if I didn't see anything after these days, I would say this will likely fill, which means that the stock price is going to drop, which it did. And the gap filled here because you see how it now connects again. It's on equal level with that previous price. That's called filling the gap. Now, just by looking at the gaps, you can usually make a safe bet. Here, if you bet that the stock price is going to fall, you would be correct and you'd make a dollar because it fell from 51 to 50 before it um, filled that gap. And a lot of area gaps can make you money that way in the, in the short term just by looking at whether the gap is going to fill or not, betting in that direction, and then closing out your trade after the gap has filled. It's a very conservative way to play gaps, and it's actually quite uh, profitable in the long term. Other gaps are gaps that continue upward and don't really ever fill, and those gaps are gaps that widen. When you find a gap that widens, you ride the trend, and you can make quite a bit of money, but they are a bit riskier because gaps that look like, sometimes gaps that look like they're going to widen actually do fill, so you are sometimes tricked by the volume or where the gap lies, which is why I don't ever make a bet on a gap alone. Instead, I look at the gaps, the post-gap candlesticks. So I probably wouldn't have made a bet on this particular gap simply because the candlesticks after the gap don't indicate, we don't see any trend that indicates, we don't see any candlestick pattern that indicates a downward trend. What I like to do is I like to look at the gap, wait a couple days, to analyze the candlesticks, and then if the candlesticks tell me that the gap is going to, for example, widen, for example, he, okay, so here's an up, here's an up gap. The gap is an up gap because the price went up. Now, if we look at the up gap candlestick patterns, we have fill and widen. If it widens, it probably will show one of these candlestick patterns after the gap. If it's going to fill, it will probably show one of these candlestick patterns after the gap. That's how you play these gaps. So what you're going to do is you're going to look for a gap. You look for the candlesticks afterward. You're probably going to check the level of support. If you're a long-term trader, you're going to look at the drift. And then finally, you're going to look at the stochastics to see whether the stock is overbought or oversold. Now you've got five indicators to play with. You put them all together. You've got your nice methodology. And you can become a trader who is profitable on probably 90% of his trades. If you're using this all together, and you know, not, not 
not uh, factoring in commission. So those are the five indicators. I really advise you to go to my website to learn more. I actually have a free gap trading guide. You can go to my website and you can go to damonbureau.com slash the gap method and you'll get a, access to a free guide here that tells you how to trade gaps and uh, you can also sign up for my gap trading newsletter. So if you go to my website and you go to trade gaps with me, I have an offer for my newsletter where I actually do trade gaps live. I will give you a update at usually twice a week on certain gap trades and I'll actually follow through with them and tell you when to close them as well. If you sign up for my newsletter, it's usually about 30 bucks, but if you put in the discount code DVST on checkout, you'll get $1 for the first month. And if you just want to check it out without um, sticking with it, you just want to check it out to see how I trade gaps, you're more than welcome to cancel after the first month. I just want people to learn how to do this because it has actually freed me up in terms of uh, time and money because before when I was trading, what I was doing was mainly trading stock and doing the buy and hold investment and that didn't make me much money. Once I switched to, switched to gap trading and I switched from stock to options, of course you could do this with stock and I do this with stock in my newsletter, but once you switch from stock to options, you really get to see how much profit you can make from trading gaps. Of course, if you wanted to watch this just to learn some technical indicators, let's I'm going to review them real quickly. I'm going to give them give you a list again. It, they are drift for long-term investment. Go to marketwatch.com. Then there is uh, stochastics, stochastics and support slash resist. For that, you want to go to stocktod.com. Um, if you are going to look at the candlesticks, I recommend you go to Yahoo Finance. Just type Yahoo Finance, Finance into Google, and then type in whatever stock you want, and usually you can Im immediately get the the page for that. So you might go Yahoo Finance EMC, okay, into Google. That will give you a nice list of candlestick or nice picture of candlesticks. If you plan on doing gaps, you're going to have to use some sort of way to find gaps. I'll show you that in my um, in my course if you decide to purchase my course. But you can also use the Yahoo Finance charts to find gaps you're just gonna have to, it's gonna take you a while because you're gonna have to shift through them but actually gaps are quite common as you saw most most trading days just by looking at whatever stock you're following you're probably gonna find a couple gaps so if you have like five stocks on your watch list you're probably gonna find one or two of them have a have a gap that's just how common they are so even if you don't buy my course you could you, you'll come across gaps naturally those are the five technical indicators Ignore drift if you're not a long-term investor, but do pay attention to the other ones. Okay, thank you very much.